Good morning students. Today we will start with the new chapter Biotechnology Principle and Processes. Recombinant DNA technology or R stands for recombinant that is why it is known as RDNA technology or recombinant DNA technology. So children as we know that in 11th standard itself we had studied about DNA the structure of DNA. So what is our DNA technology? Basically what is biotechnology? Biotechnology means it is a technology that modifies and alters the DNA, alters the DNA and manipulates the DNA and it is being used to some useful forms like for some invention of vaccines or diseases for the prevention of certain diseases in the plants also it is being used like BT crops are being used they, they are mod modified plants genetically modified so, so biology is coming uh, biotechnology is coming in use and so it is mentioned in your book is in your syllabus is recombinant DNA technology or the R DNA technology. Now we had seen that sometimes what happens like if it is a mango tree okay some of the mango trees means fruits are very big but the taste is not good it is not that sweet and in some mango uh, tree you see that the uh, fruits are uh, very sweet but the uh, size of the fruit is small. So what is being done by tissue culture method it is being altered. So by stock and sion both the varieties are being taken into consideration and we get a new mango plant which has got both the qualities like it is uh, larger in size also and it is sweet in taste, in taste also that happens in the tissue culture technology in plants. So when we are using recombinant DNA it is somewhat similar what we are doing is like we are taking a bacteria. A bacteria means here mostly bacteria taken is E. coli. E. coli bacteria is maximum it is utilized in the all the extensively research works all for all the uh, recombinant DNA technologies also maximum we are using E. coli. Why we are using E. coli because it has also it is a bacteria bacteria and as we have mentioned already in human diseases also that most bacteria are helpful bacteria there are some bacteria which are causing diseases but mostly the bacteria are useful to us. So what is happening is the in E. coli bacteria this is a bacteria it has got a DNA it is a double circular DNA E. coli bacteria it has got its own DNA that is double circular just like humans it is also having a, a, a DNA bacteria is also having a DNA apart from bacterial DNA bacteria has got plasmids Black bacteria has got a plasmid now what is this plasmid plasmids are extra chromosomal extra chromosomal extra chromosomal double circular or double circular dna extra chromosomal means it is not involved in the DNA of the means replication uh, of the DNA normal processing of the DNA of E. coli means E. coli has its own DNA apart from its own DNA this is an extra DNA it has an extra DNA bacteria has got an extra DNA it also replicates along with the bacterial main DNA this plasmids also will re, uh, replicate. So we need this extra chromosomal DNA that is the plasmids. The plasmid other for no, name for plasmid is also cloning vehicles they are also known as cloning vehicles plasmids are also known as cloning vehicles. So here what is the use of plasmid we will see like if we see they are known as cloning vehicles and plasmids so our DNA means the DNA what we desired human DNA okay. So human DNA a piece is being isolated any 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 piece human DNA any piece it is isolated when it is isolated it has to be cloned somewhere where it will be cloned here comes the function of plasmid it is double circular human DNA is also double circular right. So this portion see the size this much suppose so this portion is being cut 
of the plasmid ok this portion is being cut of the plasmid and this extra chromosomal DNA this extra chromosomal DNA is being inserted here is being inserted here in the plasmid now this DNA is a human DNA a piece of a human DNA the desired DNA what we want to be cloned and this is the plasmid ok and since we are combining the two DNA is not it we are combining so it is known as the recombinant DNA since we are combining the two DNA from the plasmid DNA and the human this piece of DNA that is why it is known as a recombinant DNA means a new combination of DNA now this recombinant DNA is again it is being inserted in the bacterial bacteria that is E. coli it is again inserted in the E. coli this recombinant bacteria it is again inserted in the E. coli bacteria when it is inserted as the bacteria will multiply its DNA this extra chromosomal this will also be dividing this will also keep dividing ok. So, we can get multiple copies ok. So, apart from that we, we get we are getting so many copies we took just one DNA when the DNA multiplies uh, when the E. coli bacteria when it will multiply the DNA account along with its DNA it is multiplying the plasmid also. So, these both are multi multiplying and we get a huge number of copies, but for some uh, like if we are preparing some medicines some syrups and all we need a huge amount. So, then what comes in view this is again put in a culture media ok that is a fermentation tank fermentation tank this recombinant DNA is being placed in a fermentation tanks big big fermentation tank where this antibiotics or any medicine can, that can be synthesized in huge amount and this is how the by using the recombinant DNA technology by using only a small piece any I here I have mentioned human DNA apart from human DNA also like if we are using insulin and for the preparation of uh, vaccines HB vaccines hepatitis B vaccine that time this comes into concentration this is the way how it will be done. Suppose if we are going for human insulin or if we are going for HB vaccine then how it is taking place. So, now we will say how human insulin will be synthesized by the recombinant DNA technology which comes in your next chapter that is we are moving to the next chapter biotechnology and its applications. In the next chapter that is biotechnology and its application here comes the next chapter applications we saw how the recombination DNA how a recombinant DNA takes place and how recombination takes place our DNA how it is utilized what is a plasmid that all we had seen is biotechnology principle and processes the next chapter that is biotechnology application here we will see how human insulin is being prepared like human insulin human insulin why do we need insulin where is this insulin synthesized it is being synthesized by the B cells of eyelids of Langerhans in the pancreas in the pancreas where the insulin is being synthesized why this insulin is necessary first of all insulin is necessary because it maintains the glucose metabolism in the body. So, if the insulin is synthesized less means the glucose level will increase in the blood means glucose is not absorbed properly by the body. So, for the proper absorption of the glucose in the body. So, we need insulin what will happen if uh, it is not synthesized why insulin is not synthesized what will happen means if glucose level is increasing in the body it will damage the other organs mainly it damages the kidney and if for a long time if this is left untreated it could lead to various complications in the body. 
So, for that case what was uh, earlier what used to what used to be done that it was insulin which was secreted from the pancreas from the uh, cows and from the pig, but because uh, many people it was not ma matching highly with the human insulin it was a match somehow it was they were surviving in it, but many people developed allergic reactions to it. So, hence the insulin was first uh, then they thought that if it is not synthesized way why cannot we use a recombinant DNA technology for synthesizing a insulin. So, the first insulin which was synthesized in the laboratory it came under the name of humulin, humulin this was the first synthesized insulin in the laboratories how it is synthesized human insulin how it is being synthesized ok. So, if we take again in the same same way here is a E. coli bacteria E. coli, E. coli DNA then the plasmid here human insulin. If I am saying human insulin means from where I have uh, extracted this human insulin obviously I would have extracted it from the islets of Langerhans small quantity. So, that uh, quantity means what, what which protein or the which genes which part it is coding for the production of insulin that is being incorporated in this here a small piece this is incorporated in the plasmid vector plasmid this is a recombinant DNA. Now, this this has to be again it has to be it needs a vector it sorry it needs a host. So, again a uh, bacteria E. coli where it will multiply multiple copies, but before that we should know that insulin it contains of 51 51 amino acids 51 ok. So, of which 51 it is divided into chain A and chain B. Chain A contains 20 amino acids and chain B contains 31 amino acids. So, based on that these 20 plus 31 that is 51 these have to be synthesized these two are synthesized separately chain A and chain B are synthesized separately means when we are going for recombinant DNA technology here suppose here is the chain A in one it will be synthesized chain A in similarly like this also in one there will be chain B again the same thing how it is being done ok. So, after they are synthesized in the laboratory chain A and chain B of the insulin chains. So, apart from that they also need a leader molecule that is a chain C. So, suppose this is chain A suppose this is chain A and this is chain B. So, here we need a chain C which will join the join both chain A and chain B that is chain C. This this human insulin this we are we are getting from here ok we are getting from recombinant DNA technology we are getting chain A and chain B. Then these chain A and chain B we are getting separately then it is joined by a chain C then it is joined by disulfide bonds means they need a bisulfide bonds sulfur bonds ok. So, when this is being synthesized disulfide chain is synthesized then this leader molecule that is the chain C it it is no longer required it only helps in joining the chain A and chain B of the human insulin. So, when we get the human insulin the structure as it we can see that we are getting this chain A and chain B it is being joined now this will be known as a insulin. Now, this is known as insulin and then it is marketed in bottles it is tested marketed in bottles uh, or you are getting insulin syringes ok. So, that is being done in the laboratory this is how human insulin is being 
synthesized. Again we will see we take a E. coli bacteria the plasmid, plasmid are also double circular extra chromosomal double circular DNA and then here we are getting the uh, it is also known as cloning vehicle. So, apart chain A or chain B are synthesized separately in the two plasmids they are again inserted for the formation of multiple copies uh, apart from that when we get the normal insulin chain A and chain B according and then they are joined together by chain C. This is being chain A and chain B these two chains are allowed to produce multiple copies they are produced separately then after that they are joined together by the chain C and then human insulin is being produced and it is uh, the first uh, name for the synthetic human insulin was humulin. It took place in 1972 that time it had taken place and uh, it came into force by 1990s the synthetic the process was being considered for so long but by 1990 it was actually manufactured and it was commercially manufactured and now insulin we are getting in huge amounts and that is all prepared synthetically in the laboratories with the help of recombinant DNA technology. Now we will see gene therapy. What is gene therapy? See one method by recombinant DNA technology one we saw that insulin. Another one which is mentioned in your book is hepatitis vaccine. Vaccine, the production of vaccine. We will take uh, in this case hepatitis vaccine hepatitis synthetic vaccine hb it comes in the name of hb surface antigen hepatitis vaccine hepatitis b so how it is being synthesized again it is a uh, synthesized by recombinant dna so here from where is this uh, which is the causative organism for hepatitis what is causing hepatitis? The causative organism for hepatitis is a virus. Okay, it is a hepatitis, hepatitis virus. So, single stranded. So, this hepatitis virus is separated. After separation, here we are taking again E. coli, E. coli DNA, then the plasmid we are taking this plasmid is being cut and this is being incorporated hepatitis this hepatitis virus is being uh, incorporated in that then it is being allowed to this hb it is allowed to infect saccharomyces saccharomyces Cerevisiae. What is Saccharomyces cerevisiae? It is a yeast. This is a yeast. This plasmid is being inserted in the yeast. After its insertion, what is happening? As the, this Saccharomyces cerevisiae, this yeast, it is being, uh, it is replicating. Along its replication, it is kept in a fermentation tank. Fermentation tank. What is it secreting basically? It is secreting hepatitis surface antigen. It is secreting hepatitis surface antigen. So, this hepatitis surface, yeah, this Saccharomyces cerevisiae, many copies will be uh, produced here and then we can segregate and then we can segregate saccharomyces these are all saccharomyces cerevisiae along with the recombinant uh, dna of the hepatitis virus hepatitis surface antigen what is hepatitis surface antigen is that when we have produced this uh, vaccine it is separated after its separation it is administered to humans so when it is administered to humans what is happening uh, hepatitis surface antigen it will uh, recognize the surface cells in body in the body where, where the cells are present the antigens are moving freely so this will rec recognize the uh, antigens which are moving freely it will attach to this uh, antigens and in the long run what will happen that it will 
when it is uh, recognized it will attach it is an antigen it will produce antibodies for it. So, we had administered it it can be administered orally also it can be administered with the help of syringes also hepatitis uh, vaccine mostly injection form are being uh, taken. So, this hepatitis vaccine what is happening it is a DNA vaccine hepatitis vaccine is a DNA vaccine it is a DNA vaccine. So, what is the benefit of a DNA vaccine is that as and when DNA vaccine means it is almost a permanent cure only. So, because it recognizes it, it uh, recognizes in the DNA of the organism itself. So, there only it will give its treatment. In the long run, it is giving immunity in a very long run. And as you see, the cost is very less because it is synthesized in the laboratories. Once we have infected and if we place in the fermentation tank, it, the, it is a yeast. We know how the yeast uh, does. So, it will mitotically it will uh, multiply and it will uh, make huge copies. By this huge copies we are getting so many hepatitis B vaccine surface antigen that vaccines we are getting and by that way it, the disease can be easily treated that is by a DNA vaccine. We have seen insulin, we have seen DNA uh, vaccine in the DNA vaccine we have seen hepatitis B that is hepatitis surface antigen vaccine we had seen and how it will work ok. Now, we will see what is gene therapy ok. What is gene therapy is like we know for the genes, gene therapy to take place. The gene two types we can do, one what we have to do is that gene augmentation, gene augmentation once we can do and other is that we will do gene inhibition means two ways for gene therapy. Why gene therapy uh, work was done on gene therapy was because there was a uh, disease that is ADA adenosine deaminase deficiency ADA it is a form of SCID it is severe combined immuno deficiency. So, it is an autoimmune disease, it is an autoimmune disease what happens is that the body fails to secrete lymphocyte, fail, fails to develop lymphocytes and uh, it is not having immunity also body does not have immunity to fight against various pathogens and the person has got very low immunity they are born with such diseases. So, they it can be treated by gene therapy two ways it can be treated other one is gene augmentation another is gene inhibition. Gene augmentation means we are placing a gene we are placing a gene in place of a defective gene where the gene is defected there we can place a gene and then it can be treated by gene augmentation. Second way is gene inhibition suppose there is a dominant gene which is expressing itself and it is showing the diseased condition that gene needs to be suppressed inhibited usko dominant nature uska show nahi karna chahiye do way hai ek gene augmentation gene inhibition augmentation ka matlab hai ki aapka agar kahi uh, gene mein kahi defect hai koi jagah defect hai to wo jagah wo defective gene ko hata ke hum log ek acha gene waha dal denge matlab it is a fine gene usse acha se produce hoega to that is gene augmentation gene inhibition matlab uh, jo dominant gene hai jo apna aapko show karega aur disease show karega wo gene ko hum log inhibit kar de just like in the cancer what we are doing contact inhibition how it is taking place. Similarly, gene inhibition may be kya hai, aap wo dominant gene jo express karta hai, disease show karta hai, aap usko inhibit kar doge. To jab aap usko inhibit kar de, to wo apna aapko express nahi kar paata hai. Do, to usme kya hai, ADA usme kya hai, 1990 mein iska cure bataya gya tha, 1990 mein ek 4 saal ki bachi mein, 4 year old girl, thik hai, she was suffering from this disease. So, what was being done, gene therapy was being done. तो उसमें जीन थेरेपी कैसा किया गया उसमें कैसा किया गया बोलने से एक रेट्रोवायरस लिया गया ठीक है वी नो रेट्रोवायरस रेट्रोवायरस का काम क्या होता है वो आरएनए को डीएनए बना देता है इजंट इट तो एक रेट्रोवायरस लिया गया एंड अगेन 
a bacteria was taken theek hai a bacteria was taken we know that bacteriophages so viruses are also no, some uh, viruses are bacteriophages matlab viruses that infect bacteria are known as bacteriophages theek hai so this is a bacteria again it has got a plasmid of its own so if a virus is infecting a bacteria to kya hoga तो ये जो वायरल जीनोम है ये बैक्टीरिया में भी आ जाएगा इट विल कम रेट्रोवायरस है व्हेन इट विल इन्फेक्ट द बैक्टीरिया तो आ जाएगा देन क्या है सीवियर ये एस का जो बच्चा है उसे टी डी एन ए उसका टी डी एन ए लेंगे ठीक है उसका टी डी एन ए लेंगे टी डी एन ए कैसा है आप देखो इसमें एडीए जीन नहीं है दिस इज द एडीए जीन ये जो नॉर्म ये जो एडीए जीन है ये रेट्रोवाइरस में जो है एडीए जीन डाला जाएगा एडीए जीन ये जो रेट्रोवाइरस है ठीक है ये ये जो रेट्रोवाइरस है इसको वो किया जाएगा सप्रेस किया जाएगा दिस रेट्रोवाइरस फॉर टाइमिंग इसको सप्रेस किया जाएगा ठीक है देन दिस रेट्रोवाइरस इज बींग इंसर्टेड रेट्रोवाइरस के पास जो जीन है ये वाला जीन है एडीए जीन ओके okay? ये एडीए जीन जो है रेट्रोवायरस के पास है तो व्हेन इट विल इन्फेक्ट ये जो ये लिया गया है ये है टी डी एन ए टी डी एन ए लिम्पोसाइट्स टी डी एन ए का जो लिम्पोसाइट्स का जो टी डी एन ए ऑफ एस सी आई डी पेशेंट एस सी आई डी का पेशेंट का पास है उनके पास देखिए आप ये वाला जीन नहीं है रेट्रोवायरल जीन नहीं है दिस रेट्रोवायरल जीन इज द एडीए जीन जो जरूरत है एडीए जीन का ये एडीए जीन कंटेन करता है इसका पास एडीए जीन नहीं है Then what happens? This retrovirus will infect this SCID. डी इसमें इसको अगर इसमें डाला जाएगा तो रेट्रोवायरस क्या करेगा ये टी लिम्फोसाइड्स को ये इन्फेक्ट करेगा जैसे जैसे ये रेप्लीकेट करेगा जैसे वैसे ये भी रेप्लीकेट करना शुरू करेगा तो बहुत सारा आपको एडीए जीन मिल जाएगा नेक्स्ट उसमें क्या देखोगे आप ये एडीए जीन क्या है इनकॉर्पोरेट हो जाएगा मल्टीप्लाई हो हो के इट विल इनकॉर्पोरेट इन द टी डी एन ए पहले जो नहीं था एडीए जीन नाउ ये एडीए जीन इट विल बी इनकॉर्पोरेटेड और ये जीन जो है दैट इज बींग गिवन टू द चाइल्ड दैट इज बींग गिवन टू द चाइल्ड टू फाइट अगेंस्ट टू फाइट अगेंस्ट एडीए ठीक है ये बीमारी से फाइट करने के लिए इसे दिया जाता है इसमें क्या है आता है हम लोग का स्टेम सेल थेरेपी स्टेम सेल थेरेपी वॉट इज स्टेम सेल थेरेपी बेसिकली ह्यूमन्स के पास दो तरह का स्टेम सेल्स है ओके okay? ह्यूमन्स के पास दो तरह का स्टेम सेल्स है एक तो बोला जाता है एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेम सेल एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेम सेल्स और एक होता है एडल्ट स्टेम सेल एडल्ट स्टेम सेल दो तरह का स्टेम सेल होता है एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेल स्टेम सेल में क्या है बहुत पोटेंसी uh, रहता है मतलब बेसिकली वी हैड लर्न अबाउट टोटी पेटेंसी इन द इलेवन स्टैंडर्ड ऑल्सो टोटी पेटेंसी मतलब क्या है एक पीस से भी एक फुल ऑर्गेनिज्म बना सकते हैं दैट इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ टोटो पेटेंसी दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ टोटी पेटेंसी तो जो एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेम सेल्स होता है इसके ये क्या है दे आर अनडिफ्रेंशिएटेड सेल्स बॉडी में भी दे आर अनडिफ्रेंशिएटेड ये आप कितना भी माइटोटिक डिविजन करो दे विल नॉट डिफ्रेंशिएट दे आर अनडिफ्रेशिएटेड सेल्स ऐसी पाया जाता है तो दो तरह का एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेम सेल्स में क्या है एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेम सेल्स में सारा तरह का पोटेंसी है टोटी पोटेंसी एक छोटे पीस से बहुत बड़ा एक ऑर्गेनिज्म फुल ऑर्गेनिज्म बना सकते देन प्लूरो पोटेंसी तीनों जम लेयर्स है एक्टो प्लूरो पोटेंसी में एक्टोडर्म मीजोडर्म एंडोडर्म ये तीनों जम लेयर्स बनाया जा सकता है प्लूरो पोटेंसी में ठीक है देन मल्टी पोटेंसी भी एक होता है तीसरा मल्टीपोटेंसी में आपका क्या है कि मल्टीपोटेंसी में आप लिम्फोसाइड्स बना सकते हो न्यूट्रोफिल्स बना सकते हो बेसोफिल्स बना सकते हो मतलब मल्टीपल चीज बना सकते हो आप मल्टीपोटेंसी uh, से देन ऑलिगोपोटेंसी क्या है ऑलिगोपोटेंसी से आप बी सेल्स टी सेल्स तो बना सकते हो ऑलिगो मतलब फ्यू बी सेल्स टी सेल्स बना सकते हो लेकिन आरबीसी नहीं बना सकते दैट इज ऑलिगोपोटेंसी देन फिफ्थ वन इज यूनिपोटेंसी यूनिट पोटेंसी मतलब एक ही तरह का सेल्स बना सकते ओके चिल्ड्रेन सो द टॉपिक्स विच आर बींग रिमेन which are remaining will be explained in the next class thank you children stay home stay safe